Welcome to the second video on permutations. Uh, so far we have discussed what factorials are and we have learned how to use them. We have discussed what the difference between permutations and combinations is. We have also discussed how to use basic permutations uh, which means we've learned how to arrange objects in a straight line using the formula n factorial. We have also learned how to arrange objects given that certain objects are re repeated. For example, the banana case in which we do n factorial upon p factorial into q factorial to take care of repetitions. Now we'll learn some further concepts about permutations. The next task is to learn how to arrange objects in such a way that some of the objects always stay together. Let's say that you have five friends, A, B, C, D, and E. And you want to arrange them in a straight line. But two of the friends, A, B, and two of the other friends, C and D, always want to stand next to each other. Now, how do we handle that case? It's actually quite easy to do. You see, what you do is you assume that AB as a group is one object, and CD as a group is another object, and E is the third object. So, essentially, you're arranging three objects, not five. So, the number of arrangements in this case is going to be 3 factorial. But that's not the end of it, because you see, A and B can interchange their positions as long as they stay next to each other. And similarly, C and D can also interchange their positions as long as they also stay together. So what you need to do is you need to take care of that situation. So you will have 2 factorial for the arrangements of A, B together, and 2 factorial for the arrangements of CD together. So your final answer would be 3 factorial into 2 factorial into 2 factorial, which is going to be 6 times 2 times 2, which is equal to 24. That's your answer. Okay? Try this example on your own. In how many ways can the letters A, B, C, D, E, F be arranged such that A, B, C are always together? and E, F are always together. Uh, remember, we are arranging these objects in a straight line. Press the pause button and try out the question on your own. Okay, here's a solution. So we have the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F. You want A, B, C to stick together. You want E and F to stick together. So we consider A, B, C as one object, D as another object, and EF as a third object. So their arrangements would be 3 factorial. But the letters A, B, C within themselves can also be rearranged, and those rearrangements would be 3 factorial. This 3 factorial here is for A, B, C. And similarly for E and F, you can arrange them in 2 factorial ways. So when you multiply all of this, 3 factorial is 6, and then 6 again, and then 2. And that gives you 72 as your answer. Okay? Here. Here's another example. I want you to try this on your own. In how many ways can five boys and three girls be arranged such that members of each gender always stand together? Hit the pause button and try the question yourself. Okay, here's the solution. You have five boys and three girls. So, and you have, basically, if you consider these five boys, let's call them A, B, C, D, and E, as one object, and the three girls, F, G, H, as a single object. So you have two objects. So their arrangements are going to be two factorial for two objects. But then, five boys can be arranged within themselves in five factorial ways and the three girls can be arranged within themselves in three factorial ways. 
So when you solve them, the answer would be 2 into 120 into 6, which is equal to 1440. That's your answer. I hope this concept is clear now. The next concept that we, that we will learn is how to arrange objects in such a way that some of the objects are always separated from each other. In a certain way, this is the opposite of what we just learned a little while back. But there's a different technique for solving this problem. The first step is to arrange those objects first that don't have to be separated from each other. Step two is to arrange those objects that need to be separated from each other. Okay? So I'll explain you how to approach this with the help of an example. So here's a question. In how many ways can four boys and three girls be arranged such that the girls are always separated from each other? Okay? So we need to make sure that the girls are never together. They need to be separated from each other. So if you remember the steps that I mentioned, the first step was to arrange those objects that don't have to be separated from each other. In this case, that is the boys. The boys don't need to be separated from each other, so we will arrange them first. So we'll, we'll, we'll make four dashes for the four boys. Okay, we can put a boy here, a boy here, a boy here, and a boy here. So for the first boy, we have four options. For the second boy, we have three options. For the third boy, we have two options. And for the last boy, we have only one option. So we have first arranged the boys. Now we need to arrange the girls. But before we arrange the girls, we need to identify how many positions we have available for the girls. So you see you have a position here before the first boy for a girl. You have a position here for, the sec for, uh, for an another girl. You have a position here for another girl. You have one more position here and one more position here. So we have a total of five positions available that we can use to put the girls in. But we have only three girls. That's fine. That's not a problem. So the way that you can arrange three girls in five positions is as follows. It's written as 5B3, which is simply 5 into 4 into 3. Okay, and that's going to be equal to 60. So this part was step 2. And step 1 was 4 into 3 into 2 into 1, which is basically 4 factorial, which is 24. So our answer is going to be, the final solution is going to be 24 into 60, which is equal to 1440. Let me repeat what I did. I first arranged the boys because the boys did not need to be separated from each other. So I made four dashes because there are four boys and I filled those positions in. So that's four into three into two into one. Okay, that was my step one. And my step two was then I created, I counted how many positions I had available for the girls. Because there are four boys, then there are five positions, there's always one more, okay, available for the girls to be arranged in. But because we don't have five girls, we have only three girls that we need to arrange. So the number of arrangements is written as 5P3, which is 5 into 4 into 3, which is equal to 60. So we multiply 24, which is the number of arrangements possible for the boys, into 60, which is the number of arrangements possible for the girls. And our answer becomes 1440. And this way we can make sure that the girls are all separated from each other. Okay, here's an example that I want you to try on your own. It says, in how many ways can you arrange a group of four Chinese and five Indians such that the Chinese are always separated from each other? Okay, press the pause button and try the question yourself. Okay, here's a solution. So we want to make sure that the Chinese are separated from each other. So we're separating the Chinese, which means that the five Indians don't have to be separated from each other. So the first step will be to arrange these five Indians. So we have five spots created 
for the Indians. Right, so there are five options for the first Indian, four for the second, three for the third, two for the fourth, and one for the last. You can also write this as five factorial. Now, for the Indians, we will have, sorry, for the Chinese, we will have six possible spots that we can use. Okay. Um, remember, there are five Indians, so the number of spots available for the Chinese will be one more, and that's six. And But we have only four Chinese, but that's not a problem. Uh, the number of ways in which we can arrange four Chinese in six spots is going to be 6B4. So the final answer will be 5 factorial times 6B4. This is for the Indians and this is for the Chinese. So the solution will be 5 factorial, which is 120, times 6B4. Now 6P4 is quite easy. 6P4 just means 6 into 5 into 4 into 3. Okay, so this is equal to 120 times 360, which is equal to 43,200. That's your answer. So 43,200 ways in which we can arrange four Chinese and five Indians in such a way that the Chinese are always separated from each other. Okay, I hope this is clear to you. Try this example now. In how many ways can you arrange four boys and five girls such that the girls are always separated from each other? Try it out on your own and then check the solution. Right. So what's the first step? Should I arrange the boys first or the girls? I want to make sure that the girls are separated. So I'm going to arrange the boys first. So there are four boys. So I have four positions for the boys. Okay, that's four times three times two times one, which is also four factorial. And I count how many positions I have available for the girls. It's one two, three, four, five. I have five positions that I can use for the girls. And I have five girls, which means the number of ways I have to arrange those five girls in the five positions is 5P5. Five 5P5 five. Five five is the same as 5 factorial. So the answer becomes 4 factorial times 5 factorial, which is equal to 24 into 120. And that's equal to 2880. That's the final answer. Okay? I hope these examples are clear to you. Right. I'll see you in the next video.